three positions over an equal period of time, so that certainly is important. One second here, one second there. Okay, the average velocity displacement over time. This is uh, this comes from calculus one, but now we are in a different place, and that uh, this is uh, even though a lot of people reach this point, they did not realize that in calculus three we are doing vectors. So both of these are vectors. Okay, so you can look at it. The, the motion is on the plane. There is no time here other than to indicate those uh, those uh, periods of time. But it is a motion on this on the on the plane, and therefore that that's how both the displacement displacement and the velocity ha, 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 have to be treated. Okay, so the displacement is over the first period of time from zero to one. Now this is time. I put time here again. Uh, the displacement is. Uh, well, I mean, one zero minus zero zero over one, right? On that V of zero, is it supposed to be zero zero at the top to the right of position? Uh, what? Number four, no, well, zero zero, one zero, one one. Yeah, you have P of zero equals one one. P of, uh, it's, I'm sorry, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Zero zero here. Zero zero, one zero, one one. Okay. So, uh, so that's the displacement, the difference between the two consecutive locations, which gives me simply one zero, one zero, the end. I, in fact, I probably could put it in the form of a, of a vector so that there would be no doubt that that, that is our, uh, our velocity. It just happens the period of time is one, so that doesn't contribute to anything. And indeed, it is, it is a vector. So this is average velocity, if you like, V of, well, uh, I don't want to write uh, any, any particular number here, any, any particular input. So if so that's the velocity. I'm writing here the velocity. So during the first period of time it is it is one zero, the vector one zero, and then the second period of time, this second increment, it will be one one minus uh, one zero, one over one again, and the answer is zero one, right? I mean, it is, it is, if you look at the picture, this is just so obvious is what's happening, what the velocity is. Okay? Uh, so then that, that's how you could write the, uh, the velocity. Uh, the, this might vary, but you can write V of, of 0 is equal to 1, 0, and V of 1 is equal to 0, 1. Uh, these numbers might vary depending on where you want to uh, put your data, either in the, in the end of the period or in the beginning of the period of each of the increments. So this one is the average velocity of the period of time uh, from 0 to 1. I could put it in the beginning, I could put it in the end. They just have to uh, decide. It's like the Riemann sum. You could do either uh, left-hand sum, right-hand sum, middle point. They, they, at the limit, they produce the same thing, but uh, it, is, it is your choice. So uh, you could put here 1 if you, if you prefer. So I could put here one, and, and here I could put two. Either way, it works. Okay, uh, so that, that should be the answer. That's, that's all there is. For part A, this is all there is. And this is the, uh, the velocity. The velocity vector as, uh, uh, as, uh, as it is changing uh, over time. Okay, so it is, it is a primary curve. Uh, then the next one, and uh, the, uh, the, whoever got like 19 points for this problem, uh, they proceeded on to to use it, to use acceleration, which is almost the same, uh, and um, uh, the velocity at the end. I'm, I'm not sure what the logic was was used. Uh, the velocity at the end is is one zero or uh, zero one. That's the velocity at the end. Okay, so we're talking about acceleration, and acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity. So we're looking at the velocity at the end, which is 0, 1. And you could subtract now what is the beginning of the velocity. And it is actually it would be a mistake to, um, to use uh, to use 0. That this, this is unfortunately several, several uh, people did, did like this. OK, so over the period of two seconds, you take the, the uh, velocity at the end and subtract in what, what you had in the beginning, which is you assume to be 0, 0, even though nothing in the data indicates that that is the case. So in that case, you have a, a vector, which is really not, it's pretty close to, to the truth. That, 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 is a, uh, that is your answer. It is a, the average acceleration, but uh, under some extra assumption that your initial velocity uh, was zero. In reality, you do, uh, you subtract the previous velocity, which is this. Okay, so this is the change of velocity, and that's the only thing 
uh, that uh, that should be really, uh, let's say, a one. Uh, it should be, so it will be one zero, I'm sorry, zero one minus one zero over one, the period of time, still one, and it is, in other words, one half, one half. Uh, I'm sorry, what is it? Uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, negative one half, one half. Right, yeah, yeah, uh, negative one half, one half. Okay, so that's the, the acceleration. If you think about it, it, it makes kind of makes sense. If you look at it uh, coordinate-wise, that, that number, negative numbers here seems strange, but if you think about it, uh, the horizontal velocity has changed from one to zero. It only makes sense that the acceleration is negative one half. In the meantime, the vertical velocity changed from zero to one. So acceleration is one half, okay? So, so it all makes sense. Uh, so this is, is not, I, I would say it is incorrect, but uh, it's not entirely incorrect, but uh, uh, it just makes some, some assumptions that are, they are not as important if you, uh, at some point you get to the limit, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how, you, how exactly you do it. Uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna have the same, uh, the same answer. But uh, if you're doing any kind of incremental analysis in the uh, modeling or anything like that, uh, then uh, uh, this is roughly how, how you evaluate um, average rate of change once and then twice. So two steps of, uh, and it's always simply the increment over the period of, of, of time that, uh, you, that you have. Okay, any questions about this problem? Okay. So, uh, so this one is especially, uh, we, if, if you still have any doubts about, about this, especially dividing by one rather than two, uh, imagine that you have a bunch of points. You have a bunch of points, and then, uh, and then you can try to understand acceleration <coughs> as a function, not as a one number. So we're talking about average velocity and average acceleration, but it doesn't mean that it's one number. It's still a function. It varies from increment to increment. It just you have fewer increments every time. So, so we have two steps, and uh, I'm sorry, three points, two steps, two velocities. Two velocities, you have only one acceleration. But if you have 100 points, then you'll have 99 velocities and 98 acceleration. So, so that still makes sense, and that, that's how the uh, all the uh, Excel um, simulations I showed you early on. They, that's how they work. Okay. Um, all right. Let's move on. Okay. So, so uh, pre-limit pre calculus. Uh, of parametric curves. Then this, this one in particular is of, of parametric curves. Uh, we're not doing parametric curves anymore. We're doing functions of uh, several variables. And we are, we just reached the point when we do limits. Okay. So uh, this is the outline of, uh, of, of the course, including calculus one. So we, we looked at how functions uh, appear and how they interact with each other. Uh, to begin with, but now time to look at the limits, and the, the similarity is uh, uh, <coughs> still there, but it's kind of reversed, as you can see. The uh, parameter curves versus uh, functions of several variables, the inputs are numerical outputs, multidimensional, and it's the opposite for, uh, for the uh, numerical functions. So for the time being, early on, it's not going to make a lot of difference. Uh, as long as we understand this, this essential part is uh, how things converge, or what it means for a sequence in the multidimensional space to converge, then, uh, then, uh, uh, then you, you already have the understanding of, uh, of, of what we're talking about. So it just all it takes is just a little bit of a, pic a little picture uh, to, to illustrate what, what we're looking at uh, what, with function of several variables. So this is what's happening, these two, either one or the other, uh, is what's happening in the uh, in the uh, space of inputs. So these are inputs, functions of several variables. The input space is multidimensional, and in this particular case, it will be two-dimensional. So things are happening on the x-y plane, and the outputs are on, uh, in the vertical direction. So not not uh, a lot to worry about. So uh, so yeah, I don't really. Uh, I guess I don't. I hope I don't need to illustrate that this picture. Uh, what it means. So sequence, it is, is very uh, predictable what it means. You have a sequence and it is accumulates towards uh, a point, so uh, this point A, 
Okay, either you uh, you think, well, probably the, the second one is easy to think in terms of in, in these terms. So these are uh, x capital N, a sequence, it is going through uh, our x one plane, and uh, it accumulates in what sense? The distance towards that uh, suspected limit gets uh, uh, to, uh, go, uh, goes towards zero. Okay, um, okay so that's what's happening on the x-axis, and now what's happening on the y-axis? Well, if you see this happening, then you're supposed to have a similar pattern with uh, uh, happening on the z-axis. So suppose we have a, a function of, uh, of two variables, so its, it's mm, uh, graph is, is a surface of some kind. Okay, and then, and then once again, with that, that picture over there, is uh, is uh, happening on the x y plane? So so we're trying. So this is what's happening in the inputs, and now we want the same to happen to the output. Just just like in in calculus one, the inputs uh, the inputs uh, getting closer and closer to some number. The and the outputs so do uh, the outputs. Well, except this, the inputs go towards some location this time. This is a location, and but uh, the outputs go towards some number. So. So we have this picture on the x-axis, on the x-y plane, sorry. So like maybe like this. So these are our uh, 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 points xn, xn, and there, of course, what are they? They are x and y n, uh, just a pair of, uh, of, of points, just a uh, sequence. A sequence. <coughs> so, so it's entirely within the calculus two ideas uh, of sequences, uh, except uh, we're gonna we're gonna see what what it means in terms of well, actually, we do know that the convergence of, uh, of uh, um, uh, it's worth, worth mentioning that the convergence of the whole thing uh, is equivalent to converge, convergence of the whole thing as locations is equivalent to convergence of, uh, of coordinates, coordinate by coordinate. So xn's converge, yn's converge. Okay, so uh, I'm sure that point. Xn. Uh, X and arrow A, and if X and is equal to X and Y and, and this is A B, okay. So then, what does it mean? It means that X and goes to A, Y and goes to B, okay. So that is the coordinate-wise uh, convergence. Uh, when you have, uh, we prefer this one. Why? Because imagine that we go to three-dimensional n dimension, and this becomes well, m dimension. Uh, and this becomes uh, very cumbersome. But other than that, the convergence point-wise, I'm uh, sorry, coordinate-wise, or convergent, uh, the whole convergence of the whole thing is is uh, uh, they are equal. Okay, so that's that's good. Uh, that will make our life uh, easier later. But at this point, uh, we now progress to uh, to functions. So this is this is just points, convergence sequences as uh, as uh, considered in, in calculus 2. Uh, now we have sequences. I have a sequence, once again, uh, two coordinates. The, uh, the, uh, there is a maybe, there is at the end some, some other point, which is, say, A with coordinates A, B, okay? And uh, and we assume that there is, a, there is this convergence, like this. Xn converges to this point uh, A, B. Okay, uh, and uh, and now uh, that that's all good. Uh, but then now we want to demonstrate, <coughs> or make a point uh, that uh, the same fact is happening with C. So what do we do? Uh, we go up. We go up from the these inputs. We're going up using our graph as a as a computing device uh, to find the corresponding Z's. So I just go uh, in the vertical direction like this. And, and then I, I'm getting points on the on the surface, like this. They might be higher, lower. Okay, so these are the points on the graph. Where are the coordinates? Uh, the coordinates are are the same. So these are will be uh, what is it? Uh, uh, X and Y and what's the third coordinate? Z and Z. Z, Z and, but what is it? So this is Z is equal to F of X, Y. This is the graph of function of two variables. Okay, and so the third coordinate is 
f is x and y. Yeah, for x and y. Okay, so uh, these are the points. And uh, uh, we don't live here. We, uh, we actually go from here. We go towards the x is the x because the convergence these will may or may not converge it is a second question uh, uh, the uh, uh, we are looking at the outputs so we are going towards the uh, the zx so these are the zn's zn is equal to as we know f of x and y n okay so whole sequences of points has been processed and taken to the zx process by the function and taken to the z-axis. And we, what, what the result is a new sequence. And uh, this time, it's not a sequence of locations of vectors. It's simply a sequence of numbers on the z-axis and nothing else. And then, and then what, what's left is just to see if there is anything at the end. Uh, and, and the question is, does it have anything to do with the, uh, mm -hmm. with the point that we are uh, uh, we are looking at. So uh, the letter is, well, there's a letter I put out here. Okay, so so it is possible that the function is undefined at this point, just like in calculus 1, maybe there's a hole there. Uh, and we are asking <coughs> ourselves, so what if uh, x approaches a, never reaches a, but approaches a, and uh, what's happening to the outputs in the, uh, they certainly would hope that uh, it approaches some number. And, uh, well, actually, let me put a, a lowercase l here to emphasize, as I have um, have been emphasizing, the the difference between vectors and uh, and numbers. So l is a is a number. It is on the z-axis. So we are looking at convergence of nothing but but numbers. Okay. So that's that's what we want. Like this. That's what we want to to examine to find out whether or not uh, this is the case. Okay. So uh, so the technical definition uh, based based on this picture well, you, it's already here uh, the only thing is to, to worry about is uh, whatever happens to do not assume that we only have to look at one sequence just like with the uh, um, uh, limits of functions uh, of one variable it is you have to look at all sequences at all sequences so this is how uh, we do it So, uh, so we have a function of, of, of uh, well, let's say, of two variables. So z is equal to f of x y. Let's start with that. Okay, and the and now uh, and the and uh, what? And we have a. Uh, let me use both of the notation side by side. So we have z of x y f of x f of x, y, so the notation will be applicable to everything, uh, to higher dimension as well, but I want to, to write it out for, for one dimension, for two dimensional case to begin with. Okay, so that's the beginning, and then there is an a uh, equal to a, b in r2, okay, and then what we're talking about, um, we're talking about the limit, so then the limit of z equal to x as x approaches a is is the sequence it is the limit of the sequence of numbers uh, z n equal to f of x x n or x n y n provided it's the same limit for all sequences and converging to A. <coughs> okay, so this is my A, and I have one sequence XAN, and it should produce Z and converges to some number L, but then I could pick another sequence entirely different, uh, uh, also, well, say, YN, okay, and then uh, 
yn uh, produces under f produces a new sequence, say z and prime, and it also should converge to l. So it doesn't matter which way we approach on the among the inputs, which way we approach our our point over here. Doesn't matter how we approach from the left, from the right, we do, remember the, in one dimension it was there were only two directions, and still you would have approach from the left, from the right, and from both directions at the same time, and the result should be the same. So the example when it did not work out is the, absolute, uh, the function is the, the sine function, looking like this, in dimension one, so approach from the left, the limit is one, approach from the, uh, from the left, the limit is negative one. So, so that's what makes a difference, and now we are in a worse position in a way, in a way because now how many uh, ways to approach a, a, a point uh, on the plane, and there are many of them. So I, I gave you just one. This is one way to approach it, and this is this is another way to approach it. And all of them has to produce the same, the same, or uh, the same result. Okay, and then uh, as you can see, that is a, uh, that certainly is a uh, is a big problem. And uh, in fact, I have. Uh, an illustration here why why it matters. Uh, yeah, so uh, do not assume that uh, every uh, function looks like this. Every every function of two variables look, looks like this. Some look, look like this. Okay, so what is so special about this function? Uh, so it's not the same way. So we plot the graph of, of the function based on the on the data. These are the uh, cuts of the, the vertical cuts in producing functions. You can see there are some uh, possible asymptotes on the infinity, but we only concentrate on what's happening at the at the origin. And uh, um, and now you can you can probably I'm not sure if you see uh, it appears it appears that if we are approaching zero from this direction, we end up over here at zero. Where from that direction, uh, along the orange uh, band, uh, still end up at the same place. Over everything is uh, good is we approach it from this direction too, according uh, along the blue one. And you can't see it, but but from that direction everything is fine as well. And in fact, these two green lines indicate the uh, uh, parts of the graph which I just indicated, just like uh, the graph we we have seen a minute ago, which uh, which looks like. Uh, um, uh, uh, settle. Okay, so you have a cross, and then you have uh, uh, two parabolas. So that part is the same. The cross of uh, horizontal cross, those two green lines create a cross uh, on the on the uh, on the on that on the graph on the surface, uh, parallel to the um, to the xy plane. So that's that all looks fine. But if we look more carefully, you can already probably recognize uh, some of the some of the problems. Um, uh, let's rotate it slightly. Okay, so you, now you clearly see the cross, right? You can see clearly you see the cross, but look at those cliffs. Look at those cliffs. They are kind of dangerous. They are uh, because because this is you can see the triangles. The the uh, the, gra the graph is nothing but an approximation of of this very simple function. And in the uh, the uh, uh, Excel tree is trying to create a nice uh, surface out of it. But if we zoom in closer on this point, uh, you can only imagine that what's going to happen. Although the value of the function here uh, would be close to zero, but uh, uh, things uh, would well. Uh, actually, let's look look from above. Let's look from above so you can see the difference or the nature of those cliffs. No, that's the wrong direction. So I'm, I'm turning, looking at it from above. That is quite a cliff. That is quite a cliff. Uh, and uh, and if and it only does it stops short of this only because the uh, the the uh, it is only an approximation. But if I make a smaller step, that cliff will in fact hang will hang over uh, over the uh, over this point in a vertical way. Okay. I'm not sure. If, let, let, let me try to make the the number smaller and see if it is, is still visible. So if I put here, say, uh, 1. Okay, let me minus. Okay, so, uh, so as you can see, the, uh, it's still an approximation and the cliff doesn't really look that 
that much worse, uh, or at least that's what it appears to be. Um, we may have to look at the. So you look pretty, pretty much. It's look it's pretty, pretty much the same, and it appears that there is a even though the cliff is is steep, but it's not not uh, um, doesn't really uh, bother us. Even though you can probably see what's what things starts to happen as we zoom in on that point. Uh, let me give you the function itself, uh, the actual function uh, of, of of problematic nature. Uh, and the function is really not complicated. It is uh, f of x y equal x squared y x to the fourth plus y squared. If I remember correctly. And what is wrong with this function? It is uh, it produces different limits from different directions. Mm. Okay. So, uh, so uh, what do we do? Uh, first, if we approach zero, zero is of course the problem, and uh, I now so we can approach zero in, in, from different ways. And let's approach first along a along straight line such as this y equals say m x. Okay, we are limiting the domain. Remember, we did it a few times. We are limiting the domain of that function we just saw uh, to a straight line passing through the origin. Okay, so then we substitute. So what do we have? We have f of x m x is uh, what is it? What is m x cubed over uh, m x over uh, x to the fourth plus m squared x squared. Okay. So uh, what do I get? Oh, that doesn't. Uh, uh, okay, well, let me let me fix it. Maybe uh, scale back. Uh, let's just go with the two follow the two axes. So uh, x equals zero, one x. It's the vertical axis. Then uh, uh, f of zero y is equal to zero, right? Okay, so then the limit is zero. So so in other words, if we're approaching. Uh, along what direction? I, I'm not sure which one is x. I think this is x. So if we're approach, approaching x equals 0, so we're approaching this way, and we end up at 0. Okay? Or from the opposite direction, we end up at 0. Okay? Now, we're doing the opposite. We set y equal to 0. Once again, look at the picture. We end up with uh, 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 zero, uh, x0 zero, uh, equal to 0. And once again, it's converges to 0. And you can see it here if you approach uh, this way. It's almost a straight line, so we end up at zero again. And then there's the third possibility, and we, we approach it uh, pull along, um, uh, that is especially revealing, if we approach along, uh, along the parabola, which, how do we know to approach a parabola? Remember the, uh, the view from above, uh, the, the view from above reveals the, uh, the shape of the cliff. Uh, let me try it. Uh, where is the I lost the cliff. Which one is the cliff? The, the, uh, the orange then becomes, you see the orange over there, the cliff. And it is not a, stri it is not a straight line, so it's easy. The idea that you can see it's a parabola, right? So the cliffs are kind of a shape, uh, have a shape of a parabola if you look from above. So that's why I put y equal x squared. Okay, then my function becomes what does it become? It becomes x to the fourth xy, x squared is x to the fourth over x to the fourth plus x to the fourth, which is one half. And the limit is one half. Okay? So uh, two directions give you zero, the third direction gives you one half. Okay, so what does it tell you? What's the conclusion? It's not continuous. Uh, it's not continuous, but uh, we didn't get to that point yet. It, the limit doesn't exist. Okay, so it's another way just to say it pretty much. The function is undefined at zero, by the way. So, uh, so without actually defining it, uh, we cannot speak of continuity yet. So we just say uh, uh, so the, the limit doesn't exist. The limit. Oh, uh, what limit? Limit f of x y as x y approaches. 0, 0, 
does not exist. Okay, so, so once again, a nice cross, uh, a horizontal one, and then if you approach along, along this curve, you end up with, uh, with a, uh, the height of one half. So let me move back so you can see the, the difference. So that, that is one half. This one half. So this is the zero, which we can get in two ways, and then there is the one half. If you go in all kinds of other directions, you might end up with also different, uh, different outputs, but it doesn't matter anymore because only one number is, is needed. Only one mismatch is needed, which in, we, we do have a zero and one half. So if they do not match, that's the point I made, and it is in the, in the definition, uh, then we don't have a limit. So that's the complexity of the issue of the limits or continuity is that there are just so many ways to, uh, to approach a particular uh, uh, point. So uh, when you talk about approaching a number, then it is, it, is, it is a straight line. So you go, you might go left, right, or go like this, uh, but still not a lot of room. And here you, you might, might, the assumption might be that it suffices to approach a point from uh, along straight lines, and then, as you can see, well, actually, we did not demonstrate it, but you can you can see that uh, approaching along straight lines might not reveal the uh, the uh, the problem with the limit or the discontinuity of the function. It also indicates, uh, and that is uh, extremely important, is that the limitations of uh, component-wise or other variable-wise study of functions of several variables. So, if you study one function, uh, one variable at a time. You might everything might look very good over there, but in the because there is a, there is a continuity along the x-axis, along the y-axis, <laughs> everything is fine. But uh, while you are you are discounting di all kinds of diagonal directions, and then there might be produced results that don't match what you have. In fact, for all all we can think, this is just a specific example of a function. You can you can think you can make this way worse if you concentrate on this cross only. This cliff not only it could be one half, it could be infinity. Hypothetically, it could go to, to infinity and you wouldn't even notice. Um, hypothetically, it certainly uh, could happen. Okay, so that is the sort of bad news. And uh, right now, let's just uh, see what good news we have. And the good news is that the, uh, our theory of limits is very similar to the theory of limits of numerical functions. Uh, and by theory of limits, I mean the algebraic properties. So the algebra of limits. And the algebra of limits is uh, whatever you can do with the outputs, you can do with functions. Yes. So if we have a function with uh, f of x, z is equal to f of x, so this is a number, while this is uh, a point. So uh, fortunately, all the algebra happens with in here, not in there, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with numbers, not points. And that makes a difference in comparison to the parametric curves. In parametric curves, it was the opposite. So for example, what we had was, uh, what, it, what was it, uh, x equal to uh, f of t. Okay, so this is a point. And we were not able to do with points certain things, such as we were not, you cannot multiply unless it's dot product. You definitely cannot divide. Uh, so that, that's why we had fewer rules of, uh, of, uh, of limits. And, but here, uh, these are numbers, so every single rule that you've seen before in, in calculus 1 uh, will uh, reappear. Okay, so, so once again, no uh, product or other than that product, no quotient. Okay, here we're going to have all, all of them. So, so starting with the sub rule, I will put it in the kind of abbreviated Four, so we don't have to work too hard. So we start with f of x going toward to L and g of x going towards M as x approaches A. And then we draw four conclusions about, about the, uh, um, the, the new limits. So that's here. So sum says that f of x, that's a new function of whatever number of variables you have, goes to L plus M. Okay, so in other words, the familiar interpretation, the sum, uh, the limit of the sum is equal to the sum of the limits. That still applies, just like with the, uh, 
just like with uh, 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 permit curves, a constant multiple rule, so Cfx will go to Cl. Okay, a product rule is Fx times Gx goes to L times M. Okay, so uh, like I said, x's are multidimensional vectors or points. It doesn't matter because the output is a number, so if I want to multiply, I multiply just, just like that. And, uh, and the quotient rule, similarly. fx over gx goes to L over M, as long as, as always, M is not equal to zero. Right, otherwise, that's the, uh, the whole story of all the algebra limits. Um, everything is exactly the same. In fact, if, I, if you think of these x's as uncapitalized, then uh, you could have seen this in calculus. Okay. So, um, and so when you're computing limits, then I, I guess just, just one worth mentioning, just, just for completeness sake. So if I'm computing the limit, of say uh, x squared plus y squared over x uh, plus y. Well, so uh, so suppose x y goes to one to one one. Okay, so uh, then uh, I don't really have to to do any extra work if. Uh, if I'm familiar with the with these rules, I'll just break them apart one by one and, and see what happens. So I have uh, I'll, I use the quotient rule first under the assumption that uh, the limit will work out and there is no division by zero. So uh, at the end we'll see that it is not. So I have then the fraction of uh, of limits. Okay, so x x y goes to once again one one over the same limit x y goes to one one x plus y. Okay, then in each of these, I could break it apart using the sum rule. <coughs> okay, so I'll have limit of x squared plus limit of y squared. And now uh, the good news is that uh, there is no, uh, we have one variable in each. If that's the case, we, we can throw the other one out. So x goes to one, y goes to one. Okay, because if it is independent of y, uh, the uh, the limit is the same. The limit is independent of, of the other variable. Uh, similarly, in the denominator, we have x, x goes to 1, plus limit y, y goes to 1. And, and then we compute these limits using uh, calculus 1. Uh, uh, you, you still have to make a comment here. So the answer would be 1 squared plus 1 squared over 1 plus 1. You have to still say the magic words. Why the limit is equal to? Why do we evaluate the limit by substitution? What are the main magic words? It's a continuous function. Yeah, the, these are actually like four functions are all continuous. Okay, and then so the value, the uh, the limits are evaluated by substitution. Uh, the something that we are not ready to discuss as far as functions of two variables are concerned because I haven't defined uh, what continuous functions are, but now you know what they are supposed to be. Okay, so let me make that definition. So, um, uh, z equal f of x, y, uh, of x is continuous. It's called continuous. At x equal a, if the limit f x as x approaches a, the definition is exactly the same is f of a. That's the definition of continuous function, the exact same idea. If the function is continuous, its limit can be evaluated by substitution. So substitution, and once again we can quote uh, these magic words every time we compute the limit. If we know the function is continuous, the computation of the limit is easy. Okay, so we'll need more